Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Great Handyman's Home Remodeling Videos. This is the Aqua Bath Remodel, Part 3. Today we're going to tear up that floor and get it all the way down to the joists. Well, at least around the toilet area we're going to go down to the joists. Uh, I believe what's happened in this bathroom is uh, someone put particle board down on top of the plywood and then used tile and mesh and it's a mess uh, it's leaked all around the toilet and has caused uh, everything to sag so it's all got to go let's go inside and take a look so it's just what I suspected this is a particle board this is not to be used on a floor but somebody installed it over the top of this plywood and uh, it just doesn't work. It falls apart. So we're going to get this all tore up. See, this is just turning into sawdust. The moisture has gotten underneath it and just turned it into sawdust. That's what particle board is made out of, is sawdust. You can't do this. And the reason it was squeaking, it's not even attached. It's just laying here. If there were nails, I mean, there weren't many. There was no glue. Thank goodness, because I'm trying to tear it up. And the less holding it, the better. chunk of that wire mesh out of the way. This is particle board. And look at this. Here's the old linoleum that was on top of it. So it was particle board, then linoleum, then mesh, and then tile. You can't do it that way. Well, you can, but this is the result. A floor that has to be tore up. Okay, so it turns out that it's a lot easier to pull up this uh, wire mesh with the tile still attached, just ripping it all up and uh, then chipping up the particle board. So I'll show you how that's coming along. So if I can get into this mesh, should be able to pull this all up. Further inspection shows they only stapled this mesh down. And when you do mesh with tile, uh, you always screw or nail it down. Staples, that's why it failed. So we're going to tear it all out and do it the right way. And just look how many nails they used to attach this. Three way up here. Oh, then nothing. Oh, wait a minute. Down here at the edge. One, two, three, four. 
Oh, they did the edge. That's it. You can't do floors that way. Okay. The area all around this toilet is wet and soft, so we've got to remove it. Now, I've been in the basement and I found out the joists are running in this direction, and I think there's a joist right there next to this. So, uh, in my piece of plywood, I'm going to want it to hit more than one joist, just for stability so it doesn't teeter-totter. So, back here in the corner, I probably won't be able to reach the next joist. I think the wall is on top of it. But the one out here is going to exist. So, I want to cut because I have pieces of plywood here that are two foot by four foot. I want to cut two foot wide and four foot long right here. So, I'm going to measure. Yeah, because I can see. Joist there. There's another joist right here. Okay. And I won't be able to cut right up next to the edge, but out here, just a little ways. And according to my tape measure it's about three inches. So I want to add three inches to the end of 48. So I'm going to mark it at 51. And whenever I make a mark on the wood, for example if I was to mark it here, I always circle it. It makes it a lot easier to find it later rather than just a little tiny mark. So let's see. Twenty four inches. So if I cut it at six, at twenty four, that's thirty. I'm still in my wet area. So I can shift over about an inch, seven to thirty one. 7 to 31. And do the same thing back here in a dry spot. 31 and 7. It's say about three inches away from the wood. Three inches. Okay, there is hardly any nails or screws or anything in this plywood holding it down. And what I am finding, I'm finding staples and little nails. So I'm going to come through, I'm going to go cut a 2x4 and mount it underneath. It's going to run the entire length of right here to help support this side. And the same thing over here on this corner. I'm going to run a 2x4 underneath here. And then that will give me support right along this edge. Then these 2x4s. See, and also, 
I want to cut a circle in this plywood. Uh, the trouble is, I don't want to cut it this size. I want it to go underneath. So the only way to really do this the right way is to cut this piece of plywood long ways. In other words, there will be a cut right down the middle this way. So half of my circle can scoop underneath this way and half scoop underneath this way. I'll show you what I'm talking about when I get it cut. So I took a 2x4, cut it in half, so I have two 4 foot pieces here. Now I'm going to uh, hold them up underneath the floor and attach them. One thing that might help you is if you draw an approximate line right down the middle of the 2x4. Then when you hold it up down here, you know approximately where it needs to go for you to hit half of it. For our plywood. I'll go cut it to fit and then rip it in half, cut my circle, and we'll slide it underneath and then we'll use these other uh, holes right here to attach it to the plywood. That'll secure it. So I got me a piece of plywood here and it's four foot. I've cut the hole at three foot. So let me mark and cut this off and we'll be ready to install. Okay, I've got liquid nails on my two bys, and I've cut out a corner of the piece that I'm putting in so I could cut half a circle on this piece, and I cut half a circle in the other piece that's coming in in just a second. So, similarly to these 2x4s, just to some place for the plywood to catch, this is the leftover piece, and there's nothing wrong with it, so I'm going to use it right here underneath as a joining plate. So hopefully you can tell on camera this is level with the floor, this is underneath coming up. is the other piece. And like I said, I already have liquid nails spread on this. Yeah, that's going to work out just fine. So I got a piece of plywood inserted where it was all watered and chipped out and broken and weak. And then on top of that, we're going to go over the entire floor with three quarter inch plywood. That's going to bring it right up to the bottom of the ring. And then with a quarter inch underlayment, that should bring it up right to the ring, where that's perfect for setting the toilet. So you can see what we've got down so far and how far we have to go. Well, I have two more of these sheets. They're two by four pieces of plywood, and that should be plenty to fit right in there and then here by the door. Then we're going to cover the whole thing in underlayment and let that dry and in the morning we'll start tiling. Also if you've been noticing I haven't been real pleased with how the sheet rock turned out. Um, and I know it means getting out the hopper again and retexturing it 
but uh, it also means a happy customer. So if you have an area that didn't quite come out right, tear it out and do it over. And finally, after a little bit of cutting, we got all the pieces fit in. A bunch of liquid nails underneath it and a bunch of screws to hold it in place. Now we're going to let that dry for a while, then we'll come back and we'll put quarter inch underlayment on top of it. Then we'll start tiling. All of the hardy board has been installed and now we're dry fitting tiles. We're starting at the back of the bathroom and we're just laying those dry all the way to the front door where you can see it too long it goes into the next room. So I look at it and measure carefully and I come up with seven and one eighth. So if I cut some tiles seven and one eighth and do a row back here seven and one eighth when I put the rest of these tiles in it'll come out even right to the carpet and I'll have a factory edge right next to the carpet and there shouldn't be a need for a threshold strip. So measuring carefully off the wall 7 and 3 sixteenths, I made a little tiny mark with my pencil and then I did the same thing down here and that's a sixteenth bigger than this is wide. That's going to give me just a little tiny gap back there enough for play to get these front edges lined up. And once those are set just a little bit, we'll be able to continue forward and it'll come out even right at the door. The next row is going to be offset. So I've marked right here in the middle where dead center is. And I've also marked my floor with a pencil line showing exactly where I'm going to be mortaring right now. Then I mud a small area, just enough for a tile. Mud one tile, the one that I had marked dead center. And I'm going to flip it over and gently place it. Center it up and plop. The plop is important that you plop the tiles down. It poofs all the air that's underneath out. And then moving the tile, shifting it back and forth, also helps the, the mortar to even itself out. Well, that's what one box will do. On to box number two. And in no time, it'll all be tiled. It only took two boxes. I saved all my cuts and I was able to utilize the leftovers later. So that first row way back there is seven 
and an eighth inches. Now, if you remember, I laid it out to the front, and now the front has a full tile without a cut edge, so it's nice and friendly right here, and we can get away without putting in a transition strip. You'll be able to just step right over into it. But we're going to let this dry, and we'll come back and grout it, and then trim, then set the toilet, set the sink, do the toilet paper holder, not the light, not the mirror.